this Dallas team has come a long way in the last five years. I think they should be proud to have such a franchise in this area. These fans show their pride in quite a loud manner, too, don't they, Vern? <laughs> yes, sir. Some of the most vocal fans in the league. You know, I'm looking at these stats here, Alan, and this is the seventh game in the last nine that's come down to the wire for Dallas. No wonder the fans are so vocal. Look at the excitement they experience at the game. Dallas has gotten off to a sluggish start this season, as they usually do. But we must remember that they've been in playoff contention since the second year of the franchise. So there's little room to doubt that they'll be right there again this year. And there's one of the reasons for Dallas' success. Brad Johnson, the youngest owner in professional sports, absolutely detests losing at anything, which we learned in your interview last week with him. That's right, Vern. He thrives on winning. We're about ready to resume play now with Denver holding on to a two-point margin. The ball inbounds to Davis. Davis out at the three-point line, shoots and nails the three-pointer. And Dallas takes the lead with nine seconds left on the clock. Denver calls a quick timeout with four seconds left as Dallas point guard Chip Davis nails a three-pointer to give his team a one-point lead in this thriller from Lowell. Denver's going to have to pull off a minor miracle to get this one in the win column, Allen. Dallas is back on the court now with three players under the bucket to guard against the long feed pass that Denver is almost certainly going to try. James will inbound for Denver as Coach Lewis Campbell hopes for a miracle. The inbound pass to Ford, three seconds. Ford and Hall at midcourt. Hall dribbles in, two seconds. He stumbles, throws it up. It's good. And that's the ball game. Denver wins it on Hall's garbage shot from 17 feet. What a heartbreaker. Dallas loses another one on the last second shot. Good morning, Brad. Mr. Kegel is here to see you. It's time for him to your briefing. Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. So, Bernie, it's that time of year again, huh? Yeah, well, we all have to pay back taxes every now and then. Yeah, what are you doing without me? Seems like all I ever do anymore is talk about money. PJ, you schmuck. You should be happy. Most people would kill to have your kind of problems. I used to think that. I mean, I really used to think that money was the answer, but it's not. The answer is success. What am I hearing here? Come on, man, wake up. You are a success. What are you talking about? Your account is Mr. Kegel's officer here. Should I send it to the conference, sir? Please do. And tell Abernathy I'd like yesterday's business included. Yes, sir. Will do, sir. You see? Everybody calls you sir. Now that's success. People call you sir because they think you're getting old. You just wait. Someday they'll be calling you sir until it makes you want to puke. 
But as for success, I'll show you success. And I read Bradley Johnson Incorporated, i.e. CompuSearch International, last year's earnings, $261 million. CompuState Developments, i.e. hotels, restaurants, shopping centers, last year's earnings, $52 million. And lastly, one professional basketball team, last year's earnings, $28 million. That, my friend, spells success. That, my friend, spells cash. And I spell success, W-I-N. And we have yet to W-I-N a national championship. You're talking about basketball at a time like this? I just got done telling you, you're one of the richest men in the world today. Get serious, DJ. I am serious. We're second place in our division. You're in the black. Second place isn't bad. What's the big deal anyway? I want to be remembered. And nobody remembers who came in second. They'll remember you because you're rich, you're handsome, you're successful. Excuse me, there's that word again. You can't argue with me, Bernie, not this time. We haven't won a championship. We haven't won a championship, have we, Bernie? Listen, money isn't everything, you know. Money is everything. In the game of life, it's the way we keep score. In the business world of today, the accumulation of wealth is the standard by which we measure success. Yet you, the young leaders of tomorrow, your objectives in life should reach far beyond financial gain. Don't just stand on the sidelines and wish you were a winner. Get in there. Thank you. Well, I wonder what evils lie in wait for us today. Just the same old good news session again, I'm sure. Well, let's get a bottle of scotch and rename this happy hour. <laughs> no, 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 really, I'm serious. You know, all we ever do anymore is simply tell Bradley how rich he's become the past month. Uh, well, we must be his good luck charm or something. We did get the Pentagon contract, you know. You're damn right we're his good luck charm. But you think Bradley will remember that? <laughs> Hell no, he won't remember that. Just wait, I can hear him now. All of the credit for CompuSearch profits will go straight to the fourth floor, just like always, because computers are the answer to all man's problems. If you were to invent a computer at the ripe old age of 24, you'd be a little cocky, too. <laughs> Morning, gentlemen. Good Morning, Good ladies. Hey, here comes the world's luckiest man. Sorry I'm late. The coach and I felt that after last night, a little morning uh, prayer meeting was in order, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, let's get started. As usual, profits are up. 13 new contracts last quarter, and we've all heard about that new Pentagon contract. Yeah, thanks to the fourth floor. All of last year's profits came straight from the fourth floor. I keep telling you people, those computers are the answers to all of man's problems. Do you see? Why did I just get through telling you? <laughs> you know, Bradley, I honestly think you'd make love to one of those computers if you weren't afraid of the electrical shock. <laughs> well, I hate to break up with this festive spirit, but we do have a problem. Anyone have a suggestion on how to win a basketball championship? We are winning, B.J. 96 straight sellouts at home, 28 million in revenue, and we're in the playoffs every year. But we haven't won yet. We've tried everything from new players to new coaches. We've even tried new uniforms. But nothing's worked. Gentlemen, I've got it. Bradley, you go down to the fourth floor, and you get five of your very best computers, and you suit them up in five of those little bitty uniforms, and then they hit the court, because computers are the answer to all man's problems. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Bradley, I was just kidding. Mary, uh, give me Alvin's on the fourth floor. Is Alvin's a computer? No, he's real, all right. He's that little weasel with the specs. Doc Alvin's. Always good to see you. You know, I was just telling the board that you're the best man in the business. Well, so what do you want now, Mr. Johnson? Are you in the middle of anything important? The Pentagon Project. Don't you remember? You asked me to personally supervise any okay, and all... Okay, Alvin. Right, I remember. Well, drop that. Start on this. Devote all your time to it and make it top priority. Got it? A magazine? Basketball. I'll have player personnel fill you in on all the data you need. Any problems? 
see me personally. I don't know the first thing about basketball. Well, I'm sure Reeves would be a better man for this project. Well, he's a lot taller than I am, and he knew a basketball player once, and Alvin, I... Alvin, I'm sure you're the best man for the job. But, sir... Alvin, if you don't like it here, I'm sure we can find a spot with the highway department. I'll start right away, Mr. Johnson. Good. Basketball is a spherical leather object used by grown men to play kick games. When spinning on its vertical axis, it becomes visible into 360 longitudinal lines. You don't have to get that detail. I am your friend. I tell you everything. A functional composite of the ideal athlete has been computed as follows. The relationship between femurs, tibias, and fibulae should be at a ratio of 2.64 to 1. Cardiovascular rate should not exceed 120 beats per minute and maximum stress. The average height of an NBA player is 6 feet 6 and a half inches. The average hand size in the NBA is 9 inches. Listen, I'm talking. Average shoe size is 12 and a half. That's big. Favorite shoe is Converse. The average vertical leap of an NBA player is 29 and a half inches. The average player in the NBA makes $280,000 a year for nine months of work. Oh, I may take up basketball. A typical player in the league owns a $34,879.13 car. I may take up basketball. Oh, now, don't get too excited. The sexual activities of the average player... Nah, no, nah, no, don't get tacky. Sorry. Gentlemen, this is Doc Alvin's head of research. Alvin, this is personnel director Henry Kirby, Coach Bechler, assistant Mike Turner. I am Delphi. Excuse us, Delphi. How are you doing this morning? Very well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. So, what do you have for us? Oh, uh, well, quite a lot, as a matter of fact. Would you like to see the end result or uh, the method I used to find it? No, oh, I. I see. Uh, this gentleman is your team as it now stands, or rather, a profile of it. That's, that's great, Doc. Could you pick up the pace? Now then, the next profile you will see would be that of the perfect team. The relationship of biophysics, various colometries, and other obvious apropos, such as the two-dimensional geometry, tell me that this is the team that will win a national championship. What the hell did he just say? Once again, Doc, in English? Oh, sure. Uh, you need a new, uh, uh... Oh, yes, you need a new point guard. For Christ's sakes, Brad, what the hell is this, a joke? You got the best point guard in basketball today. Just give him a chance. This is your team, and this is the perfect one. Now, this is the man in question. Now, watch. Everything is identical, except that the point guard is out of sync with the rest of the team on the Dallas profile. On the perfect one, the guard is in rhythm of line and movement with the rest of the team, and the play is a success. See? <laughs> That's nothing. I can teach our boys to do that. Well, I'm afraid you can't. Oh, I mean, no one can. It has to be a player to fit the rest of the profile. Only one can fit. What does this player look like? I mean, do you have something we can get our hands on? Yes, sir. Uh, let's see, size nine shoe. Hand size 22 millimeters, a uh, radiated axis performance of 0 0.0116. Do you have a supplier yet? Well, not a player, the player. We'll be lucky to find a single matchup. 
Now, uh, I took the liberty of running a check on all the players in the league. Uh, I found nothing. Nothing? God, what a jerk. Anything else you could suggest? Well, uh, I reviewed all the data of players having recently retired from the NBA. Nothing there. Uh, oh, uh, now, I understand there's something called a draft. Now, I took liberties in checking that out by taking all those eligible in the coming year and fitting them into the profile. Uh, I again came up empty. Just love guys who find something wrong but have no way to fix it. Well, you asked me, and that's your answer. I didn't ask you anything. Mr. Johnson, must I endure this scorn and verbosity of abuse? Wait a minute. Doc, where did we go from here? Well, back to the computer, of course. Well, Mr. Baxler, in your opinion, who is the foremost player living in the world today? The Birdman. Um, that would be Larry Bird, Elvis. Fine. Basketball player, Larry Bird. Just as I said, Delphi found a way to make him even better. Henry, I need your help on this. I need you to work with research. I've instructed Alvin's on the immediacy of it, but he'll need your help. Because when it comes to basketball, Alvin is a complete invalid. You're serious about this, aren't you? You actually believe that this will work? I'm as serious as a heart attack. The sooner the team starts performing like the profile, the sooner we start winning. What about Davis? You plan on benching him? You worry about finding the matchup, and I'll worry about Davis when the time comes. No, thank you. Good night. Fired you a long time ago. I am the private property of Doc Alvin. Yeah, I am the boss of Doc Alvin. Unauthorized access denied. Is that right? I'll see about this. 
We didn't talk to this stuff anyway. Final warning. Any unauthorized access will be denied. Please file proper access code immediately. There. Now maybe you'll listen to me. Rape. 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 Mr. Johnson? Well, last night after hours, somebody broke into my office. Sir. They violated my computer. Alvin, get back to work before you find yourself on a road crew. Mary, hold my calls. I do not wish to be disturbed today. God, I just can't do anything anymore. Get back to work before you find yourself on a road crew. Well, maybe I'd want to work on a road crew. Did you ever think of that? No! What is wrong with you? I've been looking for you for 20 minutes. I saw this article, and it gave me an idea. We need to run a check on all the players who were passed over by the draft. It may give us something to go on. Well, come on, man. Don't just stand there. This could be it. I'll call Mr. Johnson. Hello. We found our man. Seriously? Well, what's the story? Well, come on, Alvin. Where is he now? Well, I don't know. No one's tried to call yet. Well, what time is it? Uh, two o'clock. Forget the call. I want Henry on the first plane in New Hampshire. I want that player under contract. Oh, I've got him on the other line now. I'll tell him. Good work, Alvin. Sitting down, we found our man. What? A five-eight point guard from somewhere up north. Five-eight? <laughs> That's a proctologist for our guy. It's not a point guard. Trust me, Coach. Henry's on his way up there now. You sound tired. Why don't you try and get some sleep? It's gonna be a great day. I'm getting a new player.
Enter correct code. Oh, no, not you again. How do you know? I never forget my hey, touch. Hey, I'm impressed. Not to mention your unorthodox methods of seeking information. Well, for your information, we found our man without you. How's New Hampshire? Just great. 20 degrees, chance of snow. Is my package set for delivery? I found Terry Williams, if that's what you mean. Listen, Brad, we have a problem on our hands. No, you don't, Henry. You have a blank check, you have Terry Williams, and you have until 10 a.m. tomorrow to get back. What more could you want? That's true, Brad, but... Uh-uh, Henry. No but. No problem. Got it? But, Brad... Just do it. Goodbye, Henry. One more champagne, quickly. They'll be here any minute. Brad, the car is <laughs> Hold them a second, Mary. Well, are we all set? Mm -hmm. Ah, a toast to our success. Send them in, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, to our newest secret weapon, Terry Williams. Here, here, here. here. She's a girl. Calm down, Coach. You haven't even seen her play yet. Well, how do you think the other guys are going to react? She can't even look them in the eye for crying out loud. What's got into you anyway? You never used to bother me before. Whatever happened to let the coaches coach and let the players play? I still believe that. This is a business move. I'm listening to the computers. Yeah? Well, my wife listens to palm readers, but she never had a cockamamie idea like this. It's not an idea. It's a fact. Computers have taken me to the top of every other business I've been involved in. And I think I'm doing all right. Did you know I am one of the richest men in the world? This isn't just another business, PJ. You should know that by now. This business is people and egos, and more than that, it's emotions. And no machine I've ever seen can understand emotions. Look, Coach, we have the formula to win the title. The championship of the world. I put my faith in this formula. And all you've got to do is plug our people into it. And when it clicks, everything goes according to plan. Just like we saw in Doc Alvin's crew. We win the title. Brad, you've got to be careful with formula. You don't mix the wrong things together. Because if you do, the whole damn thing can blow up in your face. Lady's gonna be working out with us for a while. I want you to take it easy on her. No rough stuff. Give her the ball every once in a while. Make her feel good. Huh? All right? Good. Sit the woods. Davis? Not me. This is your party. I have not seen this much excitement since the Pope came to town. Every reporter in the city must be here tonight. Right you are, Vern. Everybody wants to see what all the talk is about. We've heard about it in the streets all day. The introduction of a woman into the fraternal order of professional basketball. It was a last-minute announcement, Alan, that Brad Johnson chose to make. You know, it'll be interesting to see how the basketball public in general reacts to this announcement. But we will find out quite shortly how the fans here at Lowe's feel about it when the starting lineups are introduced. This could very well set an across-the-board change throughout the league. No one knows why it is that women have never been inducted into pro ball before. Whether it's the weaker sex stigma, they, people feel they just don't fill the bill. Or some people might think just because they're women, they simply don't belong. Well, all that's moot now because here comes the Dallas team with the first lady in professional basketball, Terry Williams. 
only about Norristown. This is quite a favorable reception. I'd say so, Vern, but more of a circus atmosphere. The Dallas crowd has always been known to love their team, but I have never heard wolf whistles before. It seems the male fans think she's kind of cute. This Dallas team is having its way tonight. Everything they do on the court seems to work as they continue to build the lead. Maybe the surprise addition of Terry Williams to the roster was, if nothing else, a good luck charm. But other than that contribution, she is only helping the coaching staff hold down the bench. Summers will inbounds for Dallas. He gets it into Remmel at half, half court. Remmel goes down the right side of the lane, back out to Summers, and now we have a whistle underneath. William, hit the wood for David. Timeout. Dallas leads by 21 with 130 remaining in the game. Well, folks, here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. Terry Williams takes the floor for Chip Davis. Maybe you thought she really wasn't going to play. Maybe this was some sort of gimmick or something to boost attendance. But here she is, live and in person, and here we go. Summers will inbound for Dallas. He gets the inbound pass to Remmel. Williams is wide open under the basket. Remmel, right baseline corner to Skelly. Again, Williams is wide open. It's as though they don't see her. Time! This isn't one-on-one, -on -one, folks. You're a team and she's a team member. Now, you guys cut out this crap or every damn one of you will stay here while a bunch of rookies go to Utah this weekend. Give Terry the ball when she's open. You got it? Good. Now, get out there. Williams will inbound for Dallas. She gets it into Remmel, right back to Williams. On the left side to Ford, back to Williams again. Now Williams at the top of the lane to Summers, back to Williams. Time Dallas out. calls timeout. Let's keep this brief. I don't ever again want to see what I saw out there last night. You're paid to coach our team against the opposing team, not against itself, clear? Brad, I had absolutely nothing to do with any of that. I told them to give her the ball, but you saw what happened. Let's be realistic, man. You can't expect them to play with her like she's been there all the whole time. Davis is a superstar, and no woman can come in off the street and take his place. No way. The team just won't buy it. I thought you'd at least give this a chance. That fiasco last night wasn't a true test of what she can do. It was nine against one. I'm not the problem. The team is the problem. Fine. Then tell the team that I have a contract with each and every one of them. And that contract says they play. And if they don't play with her, the contract's broken. The money stops. I'll hang them out to dry. Then they'll yell trade. Fine, let them yell. They'll starve to death before I trade a single one of them. Brad, she isn't dumb, you know. Listen, Brad, have you considered how she feels? She knows no one on that team respects her. Even the fans don't believe she's real. You heard that last night. They didn't go to see a ball game. They came to see a, a freak show, the six-legged calf or the world's smallest person. It's the same thing. It's not fair to put her through that. Williams will bring the ball down across half court to set up for Dallas at the top of the lane. On the right side to Mackey, out front to Remmel. Remmel on the left side to Williams. She puts up the short shot and misses it. Rebound down to Dell for Atlanta. Wiley brings it down court to set up the play. Drives inside, shoots, and gets two for Atlanta. It's Williams at the top of the key for Dallas. Now LaFrance shoves Williams, and Willis Ford goes after LaFrance. The Dallas bench unloads, and we've got a free throw on the floor. The officials try to separate everybody, but it's a mess out there. Back to action. Steve Peckle inbounds it for Atlanta. The Dexter at the top on the left side to LaFrance, and he is flagrantly fouled by Skelly. So LaFrance will go to the line to shoot two for Atlanta. LaFrance, a high percentage free throw shooter for Atlanta, having trouble as of late. Here he is with the first shot. It's off the back of the rim, and now he'll have opportunity for two. Vern, I tell you what, I think things are starting to get out of hand. Even with Dexter, especially, he's going out of his way to intimidate Terry. Here's the second shot from LaFrance, and he misses it. Skelly down with the rebound. Out to Williams. Williams will bring it down for Dallas across the timeline. Looking on the right side, and she passes it to Ford. Ford drives, shoots, and scores, and there's two for Dallas. 
Again, Peckle inbounds it for Atlanta as they bring it down court. Now they get it to the top of the lane to LaFrance. LaFrance a bounce pass underneath to Wiley. All alone underneath, he shoots and scores two for Atlanta. And now it'll be Williams and Skelly to bring it down court once again for Dallas. At the top of the lane, on the right side to Ford, but Dexter goes over his back. It's not loose. Here comes LaFrance. LaFrance drives Dexter underneath. He tries to put it up. He steps out of bounds when he puts it up. The officials don't call it. He misses the shot. Here comes Rebel for Dallas. On the left side, underneath Mackey. Mackey shoots and two for Dallas. A whistle on the play, and this time it'll be against Atlanta. Wiley on the right side at the top of the lane to LaFrance. LaFrance looking underneath, and oh my, Williams catches an elbow from Dexter. And Dirty Dexter of Atlanta, as they call him, knocked Williams to the floor. Now Williams is going back to Dexter. She's on his back. It's a free throw out on the floor. The bench is up for Dallas. You never try that again. I'll break his goddamn arm. You never ever try that again, mister. After Dexter, and now Williams is ejected from the game. Dexter is irate over the situation. What a feud, Vern. And now Williams is leaving the court as the fans give her a standing ovation. played a good game, huh? Hardly. How much is a fine for an ejection? Don't worry about that. I'll pay for it this time. The guy had it coming. But you did gain a lot of respect out there tonight. So don't go getting discouraged on me, okay? After all, I am your greatest fan. Don't worry about me. I'm a survivor. But I am kind of scared out there, though. Being the only girl and everything, Willis was the only guy who said a word to me after the game. None of the others except me. Well, what did Willis have to say? Big deal. He asked me if I wanted to arm wrestle. Well, for Willis, that is a big deal. Look, he must think a lot of you. Things will come along slow, but they will come along. It's just a matter of time now. Once the team gets their attitude right, they'll see what you can do together. You'll win the title. Just don't give up on me. Not this kid. He'll have to fire me or retire me. But I'm not going to quit. Good. Keep that out looking, I'll see your name in lights. And after tonight, Coach Bexler will use you a lot more, too. He knows you can handle the ball now. Okay, Mary, send him in. Have a seat, Davis. So, what's on your mind? Well, she's about 5'9", 130 pounds. She's been seeing more action lately than I do. I thought this was just an experiment. At least that's what you told me the other day. Relax, Chip. It is an experiment. Well, then I guess I don't understand your logic. Look, if you have a player who just flat beats me out for my position, then that's one thing. But you have a woman out there that I can outshoot, outrun, and literally beat to death on the court. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to know the real reason behind this. I think you owe me that much anyway. Fifteen seconds as Dallas inbounds the ball to Remmel. He takes it down toward and into Ford. Back out to Remmel as Dallas sets for what should be the final shot of the game. Six seconds. Five. Remmel to Williams in the corner. Two. One. It's good. And Dallas rallies to beat Boston with a last-second shot by Terry Williams, who has really come into her own in the past week. Terry will be our guest along with Willis Ford on the wrap-up show following our broadcast. The final score, Dallas 129, Boston 127. Our rebound, good game. Way to go, kiddo. Great game. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. You want to do me a favor for once and call me Brad? 
I'm not your father, you know. Hey, listen, what are you doing for dinner? Nothing, Mr. Brad. Good. Put on your Sunday best because we're going to do it up tonight. Pick you up at 7, okay? Great. That game was a work of art, and you were the centerpiece. Thank you very much. A toast to the newest professional basketball player in Yonkers. You always do this. What, eat? <laughs> Wine and dine your players after you've kissed them. What? I never kissed my players. You kissed me. Tonight. After the game. Don't you remember? I guess not. But I can safely say you are the first player I've ever kissed. I guess in all the excitement, I kind of lost control. Do you do that often? Lose your control? No, not often. Well, the next time you do, be sure and let me know. I'd like to be there. Terry Williams is beginning to work out. Listen to that crowd. The fans love it. Bexler's happy. Brad Johnson's happy. In fact, I think the only person in the whole city who's not pleased about this matter is Chip Davis.
Harry, what a surprise. Why are you up so early? I just wanted you to know how I feel about my greatest fan. You didn't have to. I mean, you, you shouldn't have. God, no, I'm not even dressed. Um, you didn't have to come so early, you know? Why don't you go home and get some sleep? I don't want to get some sleep. I want to tell you that you're something special to me. Real special. I was upset when I couldn't get in touch with you last night. And I just hoped we could sit and talk for a while. I really appreciate your feelings and all. But it's sort of a bad time. You see... Brad, I'm... who is it? Yeah, Brad, who is it? Hi, Sugar. Don't call me Sugar. What are you upset about? I'm sorry about a little confusion. Confusion? Is that what you call it? You let me make a complete ass of myself? Sugar, let me explain. No, there's nothing to explain. You play up to me, lead me on, make me feel like someone special, that you really care for me. I do care about you. Sure you do. Just like you care about everything else you own. Your damn computer company, your damn basketball team, and all you damn ass-kissing employees who follow you around saying, yes sir, no sir. Well, Buster, you sure as hell don't own me. And I don't want to own you. What do you expect of me? You're wrong about all this. Terry, wait. That girl means nothing to me. Neither do I. From now on, Mr. Johnson, I play basketball under contract for your team. That's all. Period. So the next time you want to kiss one of your players, make sure it's Willis or one of the other guys. Not this kid. Women. Dad, why aren't you playing anymore? Dad, Johnny's big brother said you got beat off. It's beat out. And it did not happen to your father. Good afternoon. Today I'm announcing that in view of a recent trend in player personnel developments, I am demanding to be traded by the Dallas franchise. Mr. Johnson has brought in a player totally inexperienced in professional basketball and has her starting in my place. I've come too far and worked way too hard to have someone mess with my career. There's a statement, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them at this time. Chip, you are obviously a better player compared to Terry Williams. What, in your opinion, could possibly be the explanation for the current situation? Maybe her best move off the court, if you know what I mean. Are you suggesting that Johnson has ulterior motives in making the change? I'm not suggesting it. I'm stating it as a matter of fact. Do you care to elaborate on that? You guys are reporters. Look into it. It's not that hard to see. Chip, is all this just because you oppose women in professional sports? Look, I don't have anything against women playing basketball, football, or even boxing. The only feeling I have towards women is that they should earn their position like anybody else. Then there's no legitimate gripe. But in this case, that is simply not true. Every team in the league will tell you that I'm a much better player than Terry Williams. If y'all excuse me, I think that'll be all for now. Thank you.
two team scrimmage purple 14. Hey, why don't we ever get a chance to play shirts and skin? Yeah, you gotta get a little skin. Yeah, Lady Terry, why not? Come on. Okay, fine with me. Hey, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> your gift. No wonder. Unreal. I didn't know Converse made pink shoes. She can dance around. TV. Amos, you've been accused of being, oh, shall I say, overly aggressive, almost to the point of being brutal on the court. Uh, what's your reaction to these accusations? Well, you know, I'm a team player, and I'm going to give 110% every game. So that means that any player that tries to make a play on me, he's going to remember old Amos next trip down court. I think my play is aggressive, and if those people who complain about it can't take it, then they should you know, maybe not play the game, take up needlepoint or something. Amos, uh, you're going to be guarding against a player by the name of Terry Williams tonight. Now, will her being a woman have any influence on your intense style of play? Well, we all know that this has been kind of a, <clears throat> a man sport for a long time, you know? And I'm not going to do her any favors if she tries to invade my territory. She needs to know this so she doesn't get hurt, catch an elbow or something. He better not hurt that lady or he'll be cooking dinner for himself. No favors from Amos Washington. Terry Williams for Dallas, a pass behind the back, and there's Amos Washington displaying some of that aggressive style he talked about earlier, Vern. Dallas on the right side with the shot, and it's off the rim, and the rebound down to Denver, out to Amos Washington. Washington now brings it down to court. Williams knocks it away, gets it back, and breaks for the basket. Williams on the steal, up with the layup. No! She takes a hard ball with not just a little help from Mr. Amos Washington. Vern, there's an example of that aggressive play Amos was telling us about before the game. Willis Ford's coming over towards the score table. He wants to see the replay, Vern. 
Now Willis Ford goes after Amos. The trainer's crew is with Williams now, and unbelievably, she is ignoring them and moving to the foul line. Williams is at the line to shoot the free throw. She doesn't look too stable to be burned. Here's the shot. It's off the rim of the rebound down to Denver. Out to Washington. Washington underneath the Broyles. He puts it up, and it's two for Denver. Now Williams will bring it down court, and she looks like she's just a little bit woozy to me, Vern. She's having a tough time bringing it down court. Across half court. On the right side, off her knee, and Williams is down on the floor and out for the count. I don't see her moving, Vern. The trainers are going to come out and look her over. Undoubtedly, this is from the hit she took from Washington. Again, I stress, Vern, I don't see her moving. What does it look like? Concentration. Maybe in practice. You're stretching your name right away. We're waiting for word on the status of Jerry Williams. We did see a trainer run into the locker room, but other than that, we've got nothing to go on. And we have a stretcher coming out now, Vern, and you never like to see that. From the replay, there was a nasty blow to the head, and we certainly don't want to speculate any further than that. They're placing Williams onto the stretcher now, and she's still unconscious. I hope this isn't as serious as it looks like it might be. Chip Davis is checking into the game for Terry now. Brad Johnson, owner of the team, has got his coat and is walking this way. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Brad, may we ask what the status of Terry Williams is at this time, please? The team doctor says that it's a possible concussion, but we can't say anything else right now. I see you have your coat. Are you going to the hospital now? Well, of course. As you can imagine, we're greatly concerned. Would you leave the game for any of your players, say a Davis? Or is there truth to the rumor of a personal relationship between you and Williams? That's not the point, Alan. Of course she has the best of care, but after all, she is a girl. You keep pointing that out. I'm beginning to believe there is possible basis to the rumors. Are you prepared to admit that Terry Williams is not just another player to you? All my players are special. Special enough to take you away from the, your team at a time like this? I guess not. Excuse me, I was told that Terry Williams was a patient in intensive care, and I just came from there, and the nurse told me she's been moved. Yes, sir, Miss Williams has been moved to a special care unit. Dr. Simmons is in with her right now, and has left strict instructions that she not be disturbed. Are you related to the patient? Not really. What room is she in? 408, right there. But as I've told you, she's not to be disturbed. Dr. Alexander, Dr. Alexander. Oh, okay. Her condition is serious. However, she's in no immediate danger. I've moved her out of ICU. She'll have to stay here another couple of weeks for close observation. Well, how soon before I get here? Maybe tomorrow. Listen, Brad, I know you've got a lot on your mind. But, you know, she's going to need a place to stay and somebody to take care of her when she gets released. Well, I'll work on that for you, Doctor. Thanks again. Yeah, this is Brad. I want you to schedule me a press conference for 10.30 tomorrow. 
I don't care. Just do it. Ladies, gentlemen, I have a short announcement to make, and then I'll answer questions afterwards. I will take legal action against Amos Washington and the Denver franchise. I am also announcing the retirement of Terry Williams. Her injuries are such that it is unlikely she will play basketball for Dallas the rest of this season. And the chance for another injury is too great in the league today. This is a sad indictment on the condition of the league when one player can deliberately end the career of another in what is supposed to be a non-contact sport. There is no place for that in professional basketball, but there are no apparent plans to review and correct the rules now existing. Questions? Mr. Johnson, your attitude towards the league seems very bitter. Is it? No, but some things do need changing. Could you be more specific? I have stated to members of the press in the past that uh, winning was my only objective in any project. I feel as a team that we have partially achieved that objective. The only thing missing is the trophy. And with Terry Williams, we were beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It turns out that that light was an oncoming freight train named Amos Washington. And now it looks like the trophy has slipped away again. I saw your press conference. Sounds like you're giving up on the team. Uh, might you be prepared to put a price tag on it? This might be the time. You serious? Serious enough to make you a hell of a price. Probably worth between 23 and 25 million. Since it's you, I'll let it go for 30. Thanks. You're a good friend of mine, too. You know, I've always felt about winning. But confidentially, that's not the reason that I'd consider it right now. What might it be, then? Well, Terry was seriously hurt. I'm not going to allow her to continue and risk further injury. I care too much about her. I have other plans for her. It is rumored that the Dallas basketball team may be up for sale. We tend to believe this because we are unable to get a statement from Bradley Johnson, owner of that team. Sources tell us that the team is on the block for a cool $30 million. So whatever Mr. Johnson is doing right now must be more important than making money. Hi. I brought those magazines you wanted. Feeling better? So, how's your day? What's going on? Why are you acting like this? What are you so mad about? Me? Mad? Oh, Brad, don't be silly. How could you think that? No. Actually, I'm just trying to figure out when to have my press conference. Press conference? What press conference? The one where I announce you're retiring from CompuSearch. Since when am I retiring from anything? Since the day you retired me from basketball, I ought to break your damn legs. What are you so worked up about? How dare you make career decisions for me? You brought me here to play basketball. I did it for your own good and for mine. I don't want to see you hurt again. Oh, did you now? Well, pardon me for not thanking you from the bottom of my heart. Terry. Terry. I know this may sound crazy, but I feel differently about you. You can't imagine how I felt when I saw you hit that floor. Or them carrying you off on a stretcher. Or the needles in your arms. Or your head all wrapped up. I just don't want to see you hurt again, ever. And I'll do anything I can to keep that from happening. 
even if it means forcing you into retirement or selling the team. And now the way that I'm... What? I couldn't hear you. And now with the way that I feel about you. Since I'm on the injured reserve already and don't plan to be back for the rest of the year, let's just wait till next season to talk about this. Meanwhile, the team still has an excellent shot at the title, and I still believe they can win without me. So you can have the team, and I'll stay on the injured reserve for the rest of the year. That way, we can get what we both want. Makes sense to me. With your brains and my good looks, we should discuss becoming a partner. As a goodwill gesture to the rest of the league, I am dropping the legal proceedings against Amos Washington and the Denver franchise. Daddy, do that mean that mommy's coming home? I hope so, baby. Also, concerning the team, I am the owner, I intend to remain the owner, and I have no plans to sell. We're going for the championship, and I intend to be there to accept the trophy. Come on, you big baby. Here it goes. Yeah. I should have stayed in the hospital. At least they serve solid food there. Why can't we order a pizza or something? Nope. The doctor said in a case like yours, the worst thing would be tomato sauce. Tomato sauce? Brad, this is tomato soup. Get this stuff away from me. Come here. You make a better pillow than a cook. I'll have it. You can sit around here with me all day. The team got to this so you remember us. In fact, they even named it Willis Jr.
offer I mentioned to you about becoming my partner? I don't think so. I don't know anything about computers. I'd only be in the way. No, dummy, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a long-term partnership. I've got a five-year contract with the team already. I'm not Close, talking about I... that either. It is a carnival atmosphere here at Lowe's Arena. The site of the final chapter of the basketball season. The preseason picks had Los Angeles in the driver's seat all the way to this game. But nobody, including yours truly, pictured Dallas battling it out for the championship. Unplug your phones, folks, because you won't want to be disturbed if this game goes as well as the previous six. We're just about set for the opening tip-off as referee Kurt Reisinger is positioning the players. That's why we play the ball game, Alan. That's right, Kurt. Tip will belong to White of Los Angeles. White off the ringer, puts up an eight-footer. Good for the first bucket of the game. And a long pass to Davis. And Davis slams it home for two. And now L.A. will bring it down court by way of White. Across half court to the top of the lane. Now down the right side. And the ball goes out of bounds. Remmel brings it across half court. Comes underneath the skelly, back out to Remmel on the right wing. He drives inside, puts it up, misses the bucket, gets the tip, and it goes back up by way of Hall. Now out front to Skelly, and Skelly gets two for Dallas. It'll be Ringer bringing it down court for Los Angeles. Inside the lane, he passes it off. Commissioner, when you first received the Dallas petition for a pro team, what were your thoughts? Did you ever think that in just five short years, this model franchise would be playing mighty Los Angeles for the title? I knew at the time that Dallas was interested in basketball with all the fine college ball they play here, and I was happy to see them take the chance. As for the second question, uh, I remember the first time I met the Dallas owner, Brad Johnson, and I was impressed with his energy and enthusiasm. So uh, I'm not at all surprised to see them here. Thank you, Commissioner, for being our guest. Like to venture a prediction? Oh, no, not me, Alan. It's too close to call. Alan, as we begin the second half, the glaring factor for Dallas is the point guard Chip Davis and those four fouls. It's been a whale of a ball game so far, but I look for a left down from Dallas defensively because of the foul situation. Los Angeles has always carried the third quarter surge as their trademark, but Dallas, at least to this point of the series, has managed to keep those to a minimum. Los Angeles up by seven. White drives, whistle. That may be Davis. It was a picky call, but no matter. Chip Davis has picked up foul number five. I'm sure this fifth foul has brought a lot of concern to the Dallas fans, and you can certainly see it in the faces on the Dallas bench. Chip Davis in foul trouble at this juncture of the game can be devastating. to give the overall third quarter to Los Angeles. And that's largely due to their ability to keep the officials interested in Chip Davis. If Dallas has any hope of winning this game, he cannot commit another foul. Dallas is a good team, and though being without a true point guard will hinder their chances, we are by no means talking about a one-man team. Back with the fourth quarter after this. They don't stand a chance in hell if he fouls out. Davis still a factor. L.A. up by nine and four minutes left. We may need to have an owner's meeting real soon, partner. What? We may need to have an owner's meeting if Chip fouls out. Davis. Davis in trouble as he goes inside. There's the whistle. Fort puts it up and in, but it won't count. That may be all for Davis and Dallas. 
We're partners, right? Well, I guess I'd say that. Good. Let's make a deal. And that's it for Chip Davis. What are you getting? Well, I figure as partners, we should be together in everything we do. That's right. Good. Okay, partner. I want to trade the next three minutes and 30 seconds for the rest of my life with you. And you will agree to retire? I'll give it up forever. Right after we win the championship. Go get them. And be careful. A true champion, Vern, you hate to see it end this way for someone who wanted it so badly. Well, Dallas doesn't have another true point guard, so who does Bexler turn to now? saw Coach Bexler get thumbs up from Brad Johnson to put Williams into the game. Boy, are we in for a treat. Well, Dallas has got the needed lift, but they still have a nine-point hill to climb in very little time, Alan. And now L.A. will drive with just over three minutes and a nine-point lead on the right side. Ringer lays it up, misses the shot. It's out of bounds off a of ringer. It'll be Dallas ball underneath. Quickly, Williams has brought Dallas back within four points. What a spark of life she's added to this Dallas team. Williams with the ball. She'll drive it herself, and Williams scores two for Dallas. And now it'll be L.A. on the move again with Ringer at the top of the lane. Stolen by Ford for Dallas. Down at the other end, here comes Dallas, and Skelly slams it home for two. With just over one minute to go, here's L.A. L.A. drive, shoot, misses the shot, the rebound. Here comes the Ford Williams show. Williams drives inside the lane to Ford and he slams it for Dallas. And now with just 40 seconds to go. Here's LA and Bringer in the lane on the left side to Plotner and he gets the long shot off the backboard. And here comes Williams at the other end. She drives and Williams brings Dallas back within one. With a 12 second game now for Dallas. Los Angeles only has to keep the ball out of the hands of Terry Williams. chosen the most valuable player for the game. I have to announce that Terry Williams and I will be married the day after tomorrow. It'll be uncertain whether or not she'll be with the team next year. <laughs> However, let's hear a championship round of applause for Terry Williams, the greatest woman basketball player. What a 
on earth are you watching? Yes, Karen. What's this? It's really quite interesting. I can't believe you're so involved with this. Well, since we have lost our interest in basketball, I've been keeping an eye on this sport. Have you been uh, keeping up with everything that's been going on in the wrestling world lately? Brad, please don't tell me you're going to buy a wrestling team. Well, I didn't say that. But there is a good opportunity for an enterprising couple like us. You mean for yourself, partner? I'm not wrestling for anyone. Don't say that. There's a lot to be said for wrestling. As a matter of fact, I've been working on a couple of holds I'd like to show you. <laughs> hey, that's not so bad, is it? Not bad at all. <sighs> I got you now, you'll never get out. You're right. There's a lot to be said for this wrestling after all. You ain't seen nothing yet. Thank <laughs> you.